Дуже приємно вас привітати. We know that this was a long day, the first day of our uh, Arts, Arts Link uh, Assembly. Today we had different, various, but interconnected uh, topics to discuss, to think about. The final section today is titled Private Institutions. It's not about institutions and uh, not only private ones, because um, the, this section is actually quite a big blessing uh, for me, because it uh, deals with the 30 years of Ukrainian independence, thanks to which we could um, um, appear here and realize our talents. Um, sometimes in my head I run um, alternative history um, uh, scripts. Uh, what um, would have happened if um, 30 years ago um, a full-scale in full scale invasion at the fall of Soviet Union uh, had happened back then? Probably we would not have been uh, here today. Um, the question is how the civil society in these 30 years have um, um, have been created. We want to talk about um, uh, the interconnections in between all the actors of the civil, so civil society. I'd like to give the floor to Mihailo Hluboki uh, from is Isolation, Isolation um, from uh, Donetsk, who will present his institution. And I will actually have a very similar question to everyone. Please tell me something more about your activity before and after the full-scale invasion. But in the case of Mihailo, I'm not talking about the full-scale uh, invasion on the 24th, 24th of February, but um, the spring of 2014. Uh, can you hear me? Yes, thanks um, so much. Uh, for inviting me here, uh, we need definitely more such events, uh, more such events in Ukraine as well. Uh, the last eight years, I've been participating in um, uh, conferences and talking about what happened uh, after the 24th uh, February. Um, but uh, the focus has switched into how much we have been doing, not how bad the situation is. Uh, so we've not uh, talking much about uh, isolation uh, fear. But I believe that everybody uh, who's here um, knows about um, isolation. Uh, the, the, the fund was created in 2010, which was uh, originally located in a former insulation materials factory in Donetsk. Um, I'm really happy to see a lot of people who um, created such products, uh, projects under um, the activity, within the activity of uh, Isolatia, isolation fund. And we can see that um, our activity reaches all corners of Ukraine. Uh, it was, our organization was one of the first um, actually, our mm, office was uh, captured by uh, by the Russian uh, invaders, and they turned it into um, into a prison. Uh, they carry out tortures there, even now as we uh, as we sit and discuss. Uh, from time on, we continued our uh, cooperation. We um, opened uh, a creative hub in Kiev. Uh, we worked. Uh, in the east of Ukraine, uh, also um, abroad, uh, our cultural activity has been connected with many, many uh, different sectors, and we were dealing with um, decentralization. Uh, we also introduced a bus uh, which roamed over Ukraine and was included in many other um, projects all around uh, Ukraine. Uh, we, our bus actually stopped in uh, Soledar, um, and we worked in um, 
we wanted to continue our work in uh, the mm, building of a local uh, um, uh, the culture center, but unfortunately, um, regular army forces of the Russian Federation destroyed the building. Uh, since February 24th, we um, switched our activity into um, supporting a variety of organizations. And the thing is, uh, this year we were supposed to um, carry out uh, a huge number of uh, projects, including the Solidar uh, project, but we decided to allocate all the funds to um, to support uh, Ukrainian uh, cultural activists. Not only cultural, actually, uh, because thanks to our connections, we uh, were able to build n new um, uh, communities in Ukraine um, with which we cooperate. Uh, we have been uh, cooperating and helping uh, with humanitarian aid. And we carry out a, uh, a European Union project uh, in Ukraine uh, as well. A lot of communities um, make use of our support, including um, uh, welcoming uh, refugees, uh, internal refugees. Um, we deal with uh, cultural um, projects in Ukraine and we disseminate information on what's happening in Ukraine. and. Uh, we promote the the support for Ukraine as well. In um, in the summer, we also uh, carried out a lot of um, uh, activities along with our partners. Um, various um, s uh, cultural centers uh, carried out activities uh, with um, mm, with fundraising uh, activities as well. Uh, we also uh, carried out some, some grants, so a wide array of activities. Uh, our next speaker uh, is joining us online. Uh, uh, she's, uh, she's, uh, her name is uh, Bożena Polańska. Uh, please, the floor is yours. Uh, good evening. Can you hear me well? Yes, we can hear you well. I'd like to say sorry because I'm actually right now in a cafe next to my house uh, because uh, it provides a, a generator which supplies um, electricity. S unfortunately, I believe you can uh, hear some background noise along with the uh, voices of children, but um, it is what it is. I'd like to uh, wish you a good evening. Um, it's a, it's a real pity that I could not um, be physically in Warsaw, but I can see uh, plenty of familiar faces in, in the audience, which makes me really happy. I'll uh, present a brief introduction of the institution I represent, Gem Factory Arts Center uh, in Lviv. Uh, we wanted to inaugurate our uh, institution, which was supposed to uh, happen in uh, August this year. We planned a five-month uh, program uh, with a curator group, uh, two people of which um, uh, are present right now in, uh, in the audience. Uh, these are the curators we have been cooperating as well. Um, smaller projects as well that we carried out, starting up with um, 2000 in 2017, even in 2015. But on February 24th, everything stopped, all the processes, all the plans, uh, was suspended. After February 24th, many institutions in Lviv, quite obviously, um, for, for them, we created um, quite a big hub and most of the team um, transformed into a humanitarian mode. I don't want to elaborate on this uh, because there are many um, stories behind 
uh, and I believe uh, I would just echo your experience. Uh, I'd like to um, say some words about our programs. A private institution as we are, we, uh, we enjoyed the um, privilege to be able to reorient our activity according to current needs. Uh, after two months uh, following the full-scale scale invasion, we created a program, Metsi uh, Uvini, uh, Artists in War, which has been uh, ongoing until now. And our goal was to support artists who needed such help. Uh, we provided them with uh, individual grants uh, to carry out uh, works um, and we supported uh, about 500 um, artists. Um, however, our capacity was not as, as, as big. Uh, this was the first program uh, which we managed to reorient, replan and um, make another another program which we carried out, we call it uh, Navigation. It is connected with uh, supporting artists who were relocated to uh, live after the full-scale invasion. Uh, in total, um, 17 artists uh, joined the program. Within a few months, we created an in, uh, integration, integrational um, program in cooperation with other institutions, uh, as we um, also offer uh, other grants, and we uh, repurposed our office into into a workshop. Using the opportunity, such opportunity. Uh, I'd like to announce that um, in, in, in December we organized a small pop-up uh, um, exhibition. You're all invited. Uh, generally speaking, what happened after uh, the full-scale invasion, uh, we had to reevaluate uh, everything. Uh, myself and my colleagues, do what is important today and what is felt such a need to do connected with how how we as an institution can support people who suffered and who have been afflicted by by the situation Practically speaking, most projects and programs that we have been carrying out in uh, visual and theatrical spheres was connected one way or, or another with the uh, uh, current situation and people. Uh, so it was um, aimed at um, disseminating information or providing uh, support to uh, people in need and uh, the activity and participation in many um, conferences. Uh, lastly, I would like to emphasize, uh, maybe this question will uh, resurface again, um, personally, lately, I have felt uh, a, a, an unusual reaction that w we need to fight uh, the uh, the silence because this um, feeling of myself is uh, is very difficult, and the only thing I can actually do is to act and not articulate what is inside of me because it's really difficult for me to express myself. 
Thanks a lot, Bojana, <coughs> for this presentation. And we are trying to overcome the silence. And I'm inviting uh, Ms. Osacha to speak about your institution. Um, good afternoon. I hope you can hear me. First of all, this event is really a unique chance both for institutions and communities to ask themselves, who are we at this stage? Sometimes we won't receive answers uh, that will satisfy all of us. And uh, during communication with our colleagues, we always see such moments where uh, where you see some uh, points uh, to which you have to uh, pay attention. And therefore, uh, we thank a lot to all the organizers to for this opportunity to be immersed into this uh, project. And um, we uh, have such a project, Museum of Kharkiv uh, School of Photography. And we are a civil organization. But why I was not uh, taking part in the previous uh, panel? Because the basis of our museum is a private collection. Private collection of photograph uh, by uh, Sergei Lebedinsky. And we uh, first uh, presented information about ourselves in November 2014. And we started implementing the project that was mentioned so many times. And during all the dozens uh, of years of Ukraine's independence, we have not uh, created the Museum of Photography. Let's look at the situation in Lithuania, in Poland, in Czech Republic. All these countries with the conscious cultural policy, these countries have their own museums of photography. And Ukraine really has a few centers with the, who has very big capacities for this. But we have uh, not created the Museum of Contemporary Art and we have not created uh, the Museum of Photography. And therefore, this museum was sort of a need and we realized that it was getting more and more mature. And uh, since uh, 60s years of the 20th century, we realized that there is a gap uh, and therefore we have to do something and we have to create some institution like this. And therefore, Sergei, uh, during his work, his practice, during his communication with his colleagues, photographers, he saw tons of archives that were just uh, on the shelves, uh, covered with dust, and he saw that the time is running, and uh, therefore he saw that there is a need to preserve these archives, and therefore it pushed him to start collecting these photographs, and therefore in 2014, uh, he gathered a team of photographers and of uh, specialists in art, and uh, his uh, uh, colleague, Ladislav uh, Krasnoshok, became... And this is an example of our website, in our, uh, of our database on our website. Except for this, uh, this collection should be rethought uh, through some exhibition activities. We didn't have our own exhibition space, and therefore we worked as partners with different institutions, both in Kyiv and in Odessa and in Kharkiv. And we had a wonderful partnership with the Kamin Gallery that was forced to uh, be closed. Uh, uh, except, uh, and of course, even before the escalation of war, and we are uh, making eight. Uh, we are making eight exhibition projects. It's not that much, uh, but we have resources for such amount of work. And another comment: Why and how? How we are financing the museum? Sergei, he's a photographer. He's also an engineer, and his family 
and he, they are working in family business. And the uh, existence of this museum is financed by Sergei, by this business. And therefore, we should uh, scale our work to such, uh, to such activities. And no one, no one of us in the team is not focused on strictly museum activities. So for Sergei works in business, I, I am a teacher in Kharkiv. A design Academy, Nadia is working on uh, her dissertation. And so the idea of this museum, it really um, it highlighted our life. And we were investing so much efforts into this museum. But as we cannot be concentrated fully on these program activities, on these cultural activities, uh, therefore, we are very open to some uh, offers for some uh, to some invitations when someone calls to us and asks for some materials and quite a lot of works were bought uh, from us for exhibitions in Lithuania in uh, arts arsenal in during Odessa for the days uh, we uh, cooperated with the I zone and organized an exhibition there after receiving uh, burden fly prize so we see museum a sort of a fountain, uh, and everyone can uh, drink out of this fountain, anyone who is interested in joining these photography activities. We are very open uh, to partnership. And of course, uh, how else can we present our Ukrainian photography the most efficient way, uh, according to our experience, what the, uh, our public um, uh, editorial activities, we publish different uh, photo books. We also publish researches on uh, Ukrainian uh, or history of Ukrainian photography. This is one of the books that we published. Uh, and uh, we also translated the book uh, into, um, into uh, Ukrainian, uh, Camera Lucida. And this book, should have been uh, should have been printed uh, at eight uh, o'clock in the morning on the twenty fourth of February, but we started printing it only in April in Kiev, and uh, it was very difficult time uh, for Kiev too, but uh, we had uh, real heroes who helped us in Kiev, and. And so most of our projects are related to uh, with finishing our previous projects. We are preparing translation of Benjamin, of uh, some other publications that will add up to Ukrainian uh, human, uh, to our uh, different uh, educational projects. And we have heard a lot about education. And we do hope that we will contribute to uh, improving educational processes in Ukraine. And if Katya mentioned, if I'm not mistaken, Katya uh, Rachinka said this, uh, we uh, feel that our uh, speed is a little bit slower, but we did it in order to preserve an energy because the museum doesn't need to be created very quickly. And therefore, we are taking our time and we are not uh, speeding up. Uh, we want to do everything uh, in on a very good level. And I'd like to give the floor to Kiev. Uh, We're joined by Ksenia Malich uh, from Pinchuk Arts Center. Please um, tell me a few words about you and your um, institution. Uh, good evening. I hope you can hear me. I'm actually right now in the Pinchuk Art Center. I hope uh, I hope to see the slides as well. Uh, when it comes to how uh, the focus of work changed, um, as opposed to our colleague Sasha, I can say that we sped up uh, within uh, uh, 
uh, we cannot see any slides, unfortunately. I'm very sorry. I don't know why I have tested this and it worked. I'm very sorry. It's I, I'm not really familiar with this uh, with this software. Very well. Now we can see it. Our speed is actually uh, aimed at uh, the international scene um, uh, in the Pinchuk Art Center. Uh, so I will elaborate on this later on. But right now uh, we're carrying out um, an exhibition in Cologne, in Germany, um, in collaboration also with uh, the Museum uh, of Antwerp. I think uh, you still have one week to visit this exhibition. Um, in addition, we, we have added um, an international department in our organization. So we have been carrying out our current day-to-day acti um, -day activities um, and we added uh, the international department. Um, we also uh, have been developing a documentary the, uh, path, so we support um, doing documentaries. Here you can see um, some of the objects during the exhibitions uh, in uh, Cologne. Here we also supported Ukrainian artists, but the fundamental fundamental change since February 24th is speed as well as connecting all social uh, connections uh, so that we um, were trying to stimulate um, uh, the cooperation with international organizations. We tried to stimulate to adapt our program to find space for the promotion of Ukrainian art. And I must say that we managed to do it and we have been continuing it. Uh, this is actually an exhibition um, in the summer when faith moves mountains at the Pinchuk Art Center. Uh, it opened uh, in Kyiv in um, July. The magnificent feature of this um, uh, exhibition is that it was only possible in wartime. Uh, it was the first time that a European museum um, had provided um, funds and and uh, um, um, artifacts to a country in uh, undergoing a war. Uh, it was more than partnership, but uh, more uh, of a sign for us, so that uh, they trust us, they have faith in us, and it was a gesture of accepting Ukraine in uh, the, the, the European family. Uh, this partnership uh, inspires us a lot and uh, supports us. It wasn't uh, easy in terms of um, transporting the collection uh, as it was impossible uh, to um, um, to secure the um, uh, to secure the, this collection from from um, accidents due to war. Uh, another collection is Russian war climbs. This project was born, uh, it was a site-specific um, uh, exhibition. Previously it was called Russian House, so we rebranded it and we made it a real Russian house, uh, depicting the real uh, Russian uh, activity, its real face. It's a um, essentially, it's, it's, it's a documentary um, project with uh, videos, with um, um, photos uh, documenting uh, war crimes in Ukraine, the Russian war crimes in Ukraine. Uh, this project is actually on tour, so we exhibit it um, in politically dense uh, situations uh, and uh, locations, for example, in the NATO office in Brussels, also in the Euro Parliament in Brussels. And yesterday it opened uh, in uh, the building, uh, parliamentary buildings in London. 
uh, we try to make it um, really current and to keep um, keep this uh, uh, angle on um, on the project uh, current. As you know, I'm responsible for a research platform um, in the Ukrainian contemporary art, and we were able to reorient our activity onto the people who uh, record photographically and to create a, an, a, an exhibition uh, also along with uh, videos, which is quite a novelty. Uh, it's a brand new experience, brand new direction for us, uh, which uh, needs an extreme speed as well and flexibility. Uh, as it is really difficult to organize everything and connect the dots. Uh, so every single time when we uh, remove and um, uh, present the, the um, uh, host the, uh, the exhibition in a different place, we need to dis disassemble and reassemble everything piece by piece. Uh, in Basel this year, uh, we presented a partner program uh, with Daria Shetsova. It was a special, unique uh, video program, uh, also in uh, at the Basel Theater, which we presented. There, I will not show you everything uh, because um, there is just too many projects uh, and not enough time. Uh, but currently, um, we have been uh, assembling the the exhibition Objednani Connected. And I wanted to share with uh, with my colleagues that uh, I wanted to show you um, um, our gem in our collection. Uh, this is a special um, uh, curry you can see it on the left. Our uh, technical team, uh, we're very proud to have them uh, because they created it. It's a mobile uh, four-wheeler. Uh, with a metal construction with um, some lighting and this device can um, uh, light uh, provide light to, uh, to to the walls without uh, much of electrical uh, supply um, we continue installing such devices uh, and such challenges uh, we experience every single day. Uh, it is a kind of a quest for us as we need to um, find a novel solution every single time. So we feel that every single day we, um, uh, we gain new experience. Another example is uh, our construction team is assembling um, uh, the device and it's another alteration uh, of the same device. Uh, it is powered by batteries. Uh, so um, it can work without electrical uh, supply. Uh, here you can see, uh, in this slide you can see the process of assembly um, with a headlamp, uh, again without any need for electrical uh, power. Um, it happens sometimes that I cannot reach uh, some kind of artist. I understand uh, that not every single task is uh, possible to, to be carried out, but as I look at my construction team who, um, without any rush, uh, continue the working, even when um, electrical power is out, uh, they can keep, um, they can continue working uh, regardless. So I understand they also face uh, huge challenges, but at the same time, it uh, provides a lot of um, uh, a lot of stimulation uh, and a lot of uh, happiness. This process, um, organizing exhibitions, somebody can say, well, maybe it's not the time for it. Maybe you should wait. Uh, maybe you should be doing something that you that you can do. Uh, but I believe we should uh, develop, we should help um, reflect uh, 
what they feel, what they um, go through, and in an artistic form. Obviously, our plans and strategies have changed. We understand that next year we will be working differently. Uh, technical issues is one thing, but um, the topics is quite another. So we need to, um, we really need to um, propagate the, uh, the Ukrainian ideas abroad. We understand that we cannot um, stop and this emergency regime um, provides only one exit. Uh, we need to cr uh, make it a policy, uh, create some normative uh, framework so that resources are provided and create small um, catharsis regardless of uh, whether there is light or the light is out. And it also provides us a lot of experience for which I'm really thankful and we can build upon that. Thank you very much. Dear, dear colleagues, um, I'm happy uh, that um, you give us signals that everything's okay, that you're alive, uh, despite all the adversity. Um, it adds, uh, actually all these problems um, add to your testimony. Uh, we hear voices from uh, Lviv, from, uh, from uh, other regions, and we understand that uh, you continue your work uh, in spite of, in the face of adversity. And we understand that uh, artistic, cultural professionals uh, choose um, um, consciously this, uh, this path. Everybody does whatever they can uh, to continue working so that the, um, the society can continue existing. Uh, every single time uh, you, you help uh, changes the slogan from stand with Ukraine into win with Ukraine. I believe you... Uh, it makes me think, maybe because we're in the center of Warsaw in the Wyazdowski Castle, it made me remind of uh, an, a novella of uh, Stanislav Lem called by um, digital uh, education. Uh, there is a theme about a young person who um, receives some um, sped up education and they uh, defrost uh, to uh, people from the past. Uh, so one of the defrosted people uh, tells a story about his life, that he used to be a musician uh, in an orchestra uh, that played without, uh, continued playing uh, despite playing in front of a, uh, uh, a cannibal. Uh, so when he took a break, uh, it would be possible that um, uh, this cannibal would, would devour him. So that's why he continued uh, playing. Uh, this phantasmagoric uh, story uh, is, um, may, may, may sound quite um, Im 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 impossible, but this cannibal actually said that he started crying because he doesn't like human meat and he's actually uh, vomiting with his meat. Uh, you must understand about the author of this novella, uh, Stanislav Lem, uh, he um, spent his uh, childhood in Lviv. Uh, right now we are experiencing uh, true um, threats to humanity, but still despite these threats we continue uh, our work and create uh, culture. Uh, let's talk about the Ukrainian um, uh, culture right now. I understand we do not have influence on um, security, on safety, but uh, what can, uh, so, so what do you think uh, you're missing the most? Who do you miss the most? Um, I know that all your teams are kind of dispersed, but uh, how can you make it possible to create these connections? I'd like to uh, give the floor to Mihailo, who waited really long for, uh, for his uh, uh, speech. Time 
you have mentioned it quite a lot of times, uh, and it's very difficult to react to what is going on all the time, uh, all the time, and therefore we all lack time uh, to make some more meaningful projects or um, some projects that would require long thinking. And uh, but still, I think that. These are the times we are living in, and after the victory, we will have enough time to look at everything uh, with the microscope and uh, to zoom in and see all the details of the things. Um, and what is missing, what, what we lack? I think we do not have enough capacities of the cultural sector because in my opinion, all people who are able to do something, they are doing this. We are working uh, enormously. Uh, we uh, know that it's very important and we know that a lot depends upon us. And at the same time, if there are new projects, some new challenges, some new ideas, then it's difficult to find new uh, contractors, new um, people who will execute this, um, implement this. And Aliftina mentioned it in the morning that uh, we have uh, a lot of orders, we have a lot of connections, a lot of ties, because our colleagues from abroad and uh, Ukrainian colleagues, uh, they just do not have such a large pool of people to work with. And therefore, it also relate, is related to educational aspects. So if we are speaking about the problems that we faced before the full-scale invasion, uh, problems with financing, then the situation is much better, although it sounds quite uh, like a paradox. We have so many foundations uh, who are open to giving us finances, and it's not that difficult to find, uh, uh, to raise some money, but to find people who are going to do this, it's quite a challenge. Now we are uh, giving floor to our online speakers. Yes, I can hear you well, and I hope that you can hear us well too. Yes, absolutely. I think that uh, uh, I can support this idea. Really, uh, there is not enough time uh, for us. And on the one hand, uh, this time is sp speeded up. Everything is accelerated. And we have so many opportunities, so many suggestions. And we cannot, uh, we do not have enough time to react profoundly to uh, them. But the time that we have, due to all these obstacles we are facing, this time becomes a little more prolonged. And so sometimes we have uh, a day with some uh, specific uh, number of hours. So uh, and this day just becomes shorter, and we do not have enough time to react and do what we want. And so sometimes it seems to me that when I'm uh, looking at my colleagues, when I'm looking at myself, It seems to me that all our work that we are doing, despite all the difficulties, that it's, it's a sort of therapy. Uh, it's sort of uh, proving that we can do this despite the challenges and despite the life going on around us. I have not mentioned in my previous speech about one of the project, and this is a, a project in the form of uh, art residency within a very big international project, Magic Art. And starting uh, this year, we focused on the topic uh, uh, we are together. And a few curators who are also curators of Arts Link, they cooperated with us in this art residency. And for a few weeks, 
uh, this year we invited parents with their children to take part in different artistic uh, activities, theatrical activities, and visual arts. And we uh, implemented this project because we realized that we really like this time. We don't have enough time to talk to each other, to be together, and to and sometimes to ask uh, each other, ask each other, how are you doing? So we were trying to motivate the artists uh, whom we engaged, and uh, we provided some therapy. Mm, is, is therapeutical practices to the mm, uh, team members, to participants, and it was a unique way for them to just to stop and to think uh, what they are going through uh, in some playful uh, form uh, by uh, uh, engaging themselves in some um, interesting activities. This is one of the aspects. And another aspect that uh, I would like to share with you answering this question, uh, we see a very uh, bad burning out of people in our sector. We saw that quite a lot of people left us during this short period of time after the full-scale invasion started uh, due to many various reasons. And our industry, artistic and cultural, uh, our activities uh, do not have very specific results sometimes. And sometimes we just, uh, we just do not feel the sense of what we are doing. If we compare it, for example, to some social uh, activities, there is a real need and there is a real answer to this. Uh, and it seems to me that we sometimes need these moments to stop and just talk to each other, to feel ourselves, to feel other people, that they are in the same situation. And again, say out loudly that what we are doing is really needed in a long-term perspective. And the project that I mentioned before that have the social aspect support to artistic environment uh, or to artists who uh, were relocated to Lviv or who are in very difficult life conditions. Uh, so uh, for us, for people who are working in this artistic uh, industry, is this a sort of a need for us to support them, to help them? Uh, we feel at ease when we are supporting them. and. Uh, we realize that everything that what we are doing, uh, not only in long perspective, but in shorter perspective, that it makes sense because we see the results uh, of this work right now. And this support and these ties and connections that uh, we were trying to uh, to have with our colleagues abroad, I can say uh, to you, and I will be very sincere, we need people here, uh, right here, and sometimes our wish is to create something. We have a lot of ideas, but we do like people. We don't have enough people to do that. And this is one of the biggest challenges. And we do not have an answer to this. We are just reacting reactively every time we face a challenge, but we don't have a long-term answer to this. So I think we, uh, we want uh, so much, and we are trying to use different uh, ways to find subcontractors to finish the space. Uh, we do hope that uh, that uh, our project will be implemented in the end. 
Thanks for your ideas. Thank you for the diagnosis. And I'm sure that this is a bigger picture of Ukrainian society during the war times. And if you speak to medical personnel, they will tell to us that we don't have enough people. We are burnt out. And it started even during the COVID times. You speak to uh, railway uh, specialists uh, and even the uh, cemetery uh, director told me that most of all, I lack people. I don't have enough people to do my work. And this is a problem that will not be overcome until we have our victory. It, um, but uh, except for this, there are other problems. And so I'm giving the floor to Alexandra Sacha, who is going to uh, present her point of view. When we are speaking about challenges that every one of us uh, faces, I think that we have to, f we are trying to find the meaning of our own activities. And so we prove to ourselves that it is needed by someone. Uh, and therefore, when we are, uh, we should justify that we are uh, spending our resources and it makes sense. And uh, we felt it very uh, well uh, before the evacuation of our works. Uh, I can say that subconsciously we knew that the escalation of war would happen. We knew about it a long time ago. Every time when we were speaking about buying of archives, not of Kharkiv authors, but when they found out that we are a private institution, they were asking us, but what if happens? But what happens if? If? If what? You are very close to Russia, they told. Uh, uh, Kharkiv region is not so far from uh, Russia, from the Russian border. So it won't take long for tanks to reach Kharkiv. So in which way are you going to preserve our collection? How can you prove that you are capable uh, uh, to preserve these archives? How can we trust you? And. Uh, we heard in the, we felt in the air that uh, all these talks, they are becoming more and more serious. And therefore, my team and I we had a lot of doubts whether we have to be, uh, whether we have to evacuate these works or no. So by February 24th, I uh, had to make a call. I planned a call on the 21st of February to evacuate the works and how to do it. But on the 24th of February, I had to evacuate myself. But uh, what made us postpone this decision all the time, it was uh, Sergei's attitude. Uh, he told to us that we know these authors personally, we have friendship relationships um, with them. So how can we take care of their works if we cannot uh, help these people? So during the first months, uh, we uh, turned our website, uh, our Facebook, Facebook page into a humanitarian aid page, and we forgot uh, totally about museum activity. We just posted some information. Uh, here are the volunteers that can drop you somewhere. And uh, only later, uh, on the initiative of another volunteer, Veronika, who called to me and told me that I am helping to evacuate from Kharkiv uh, the archives. Then we started thinking about this. Yes, we should do it. Now the collection is in safety. This collection was evacuated to Germany. And now we are able to operate. But the way of operation is really related to helping our authors. We uh, are trying to uh, propagate, uh, popularize, uh, promote photographies uh, via mechanisms of partnership uh, with gallery in Paris. We have a wonderful friend, Alexandra Bufuiras. Uh, this gallery uh, does not sell this collection, uh, but we are uniting, uh, we are connecting collection with our uh, authors. And I think this is quite a big achievement uh, during this year. So we were able to present the Farkiv School of uh, Photography uh, at the best uh, fair 
uh, in uh, of photography in Europe. And Guardian, Le Figaro, Le Monde uh, prepared articles about Kharkiv photography. So they started paying attention to our arts and due uh, to such local support uh, this author or that author becomes popular and so he receives some financial support and he can exist and uh, ex this created the um, environment uh, and um, so we used such uh, so these strategies help us uh, to preserve the feeling that the people that we are working with, this is our main investment, this is our main capital. And so we have to cherish these ties, cherish our relations with each other. Uh, being in the epicenter of uh, European history of the 21st century, and for fight for democracy, as we understand, as we think of this, uh, the situation of Iran or Taiwan, uh, this helps us understand the grand uh, goal um, for the future that we are fighting right now in Ukraine. Uh, this proves that a cultural area of Ukraine is expanding. They are asking uh, us, okay, please tell us about yourself. Who are you? Uh, Ksenia, mm, please tell me, um, how does uh, this manifest itself in uh, Pinchuk Art Center? Would you say that um, how, how would you say, how does the uh, cultural um, area is, is, is saturated uh, when it comes to your um, uh, activity? What is missing, actually, would you say? Ksenia, can you hear me? Uh, it's a real pity that... Uh, we've lost you, but uh, we hope to reconnect with you again. Uh, we need to wrap up. Uh, so the key takeaways from today, um, if you have any uh, comments, please uh, leave them for the, uh, for the last 10 minutes. Now I would like to make a final uh, round of um, uh, talks. I'd like to ask people from um, Kharkiv, Solodoro Donetsk, and here in Warsaw. How do you understand uh, the, the aim of your activity? How do you convince yourself that uh, there is a place uh, for us in the grand plan post-victory? Um, thank you so much. Indeed, as we spoke today, uh, we need to be, um, we need to know the answer to this question, although it's really, really difficult. Uh, our fund has been dealing for the past few years and actually in its entirety is the democratization of uh, the Ukrainian uh, cultural sphere. It is a, an important step into the future and uh, the direction of, uh, of work of everybody uh, present uh, in here for the development of the Ukrainian um, commu um, society of the future. Uh, we can see how many organizations, um, cultural activists, m numerous activists of culture who dream about social changes in the communities have actually r surfaced uh, in the past um, eight years. Until 2014, everything was concentrated in Donetsk but uh, there was no sign that in small communities um, y such organizations would appear as we have now. In every little town, uh, we have th these... Uh, I mean, of course, after the February 24th, uh, this number uh, was reduced, but still, such cultural activities, uh, different hubs, creative hubs, uh, have been um, created and these are the 
the leaders of change uh, in the communities. In our activity, we want to um, multiply the number of such um, organizations in small um, in, in small towns. We understand that uh, in the cities you've got the money, you've got the resources, and you've got the people who understand how to make things happen. Uh, and there is a great demand for it in, in, in big cities. We work with a lot of um, small um, NGOs and uh, this happened after the decentralization, I'm speaking about the reform of decentralizing um, implemented by the Ukrainian uh, government, uh, thus created new um, territorial communities, uh, local communities. Um, this is how actually Solidar um, came to being. Uh, this indeed is a new town uh, which is looking for, um, maybe not right now, but I'm confident that after our victory it will continue uh, looking for its place, uh, the structure of its being. And um, we've been um, uh, contacting with such organizations. Uh, they, for, for example, created a culture department and they are asking us, uh, what can we do? We want to learn. Uh, how, what do you suggest we do? Uh, and they need our support. Uh, they are really looking into the future. The future is bright for them. Um, so we really hope that uh, this energy is concentrated also in small um, communities. Um, I saw Ksenia move a little, but I'm afraid she cannot hear us. Yes, I can. Actually, I, I can. If you heard the question, maybe uh, you'd like to, to, to reflect on it. I was asking about the culture which is to become part of the reconstruction of Ukraine. Um, what kind of basis do you have for uh, optimism? Uh, for the arguments why culture is the margin that gradually becomes uh, the core. Uh, 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 a phenomenon that is currently uh, happening and contributes to uh, the reconstruction. Unfortunately, uh, the connection is so bad that we cannot actually understand you in uh, in Ukrainian. I'm very sorry. How about you turn off video and maybe the signal will, will, will improve. Let's test this. Try turning off uh, the video. I did. Uh, please repeat. I will speak slowly. Yes, now, now, so much better. Thanks uh, for your patience. Uh, together with artists, we can think about the future. Yeah, I almost understood what you're talking about. Uh, right now, uh, we can hear you really well. Right now, I'm focused on the work that is created by artists for the exhibitions that we c are trying to finalize until January. 
uh, when it comes to the future. Uh, we can find solution how to build the future of and this is the main role of cultural institutions Thanks so much. I think I got uh, the gist. Uh, but uh, indeed, we do not need to prove that art really is important. Uh, Ksenia, please take the floor. Uh, sorry, uh, Alexandra. We all understand, obviously. When it comes to the activity of uh, the activity of um, contemporary art centers and the um, uh, how how the future can look like and how we can shape it, it's the accumulation of um, of the reflection of the past. We need to um, collect materials from the past to reimagine what happened until the the whole tragedy we go we, we've been going through and the Ukrainian example is um, is truly example uh, it is full of uh, archetypes sim symbolism that identify uh, the community and its uh, trajectory its um, efforts endeavors and uh, all the interdependencies between uh, the Soviet and the non-Soviet. So th um, history needs not to be um, retained, saved, but it needs to be um, reimagined and presented to the wide audience. And this is why the future cannot um, exist without a, 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 a clear vision of the past. And uh, I believe this is the goal that we uh, set. Yeah, this is yes, this is uh, the reimagining of that we need so much. But the, can you hear us? And could you uh, bring us to uh, to the end of the discussion? Yes, I can hear very well. Uh, it's very difficult to answer this question, to be honest, uh, for a number of reasons. Right now. The current situation is so volatile that we do not keep up to um, comprehend what's happening with us. But one thing uh, which I understand really c clearly, uh, and many people have been talking about this, is that today what is happening is a great change. Uh, one paradigm is being disassembled, but we are building upon, we are creating, we're slowly building um, a new paradigm. We have been feeling the changes, we've been experiencing them, and obviously art is, uh, is a litmus test that uh, is the first to react to what's happening. We have been cooperating with um, visual arts and um, contemporary theatre. Indeed, contemporary theatre is one of the types of art which can react really quickly. And after the full-scale invasion, not only in um, our area, but also in our city, there have been many um, exhibitions as a reaction to to how we processed February 24th, how to comprehend uh, the stories and, and, and what is happening with us and the fixation of uh, this state. So I believe that art can um, 
record this best and to archive um, the stories. And for many years, we will still um, have to uh, spend on debating, comprehending. Um, so right now, what we have been experiencing is a truly unique uh, time in history. Everything that we have been going through will be uh, the bricks in uh, the uh, in the future that we're uh, headed towards after victory. I would like to add that um, that uh, the reflections after reflections. Now I understand really clearly that people of culture, the professionals since the beginning of the big war. Um, do not uh, have not been helping uh, as one person but together we have been uniting people not virtually but in reality we have been um, contacting with people in our networks and we understand that we can only save ourselves together supporting the solidarity being responsible and uh, we aim to live to survive to um, um, rise up and uh, develop together. Uh, this is, I believe, why we will uh, win, because this is an ethical field in which there will be no um, uh, egoism, there will be no place for egoism, but uh, one person will uh, develop thanks to another. We are uh, a promise so that our um, work together uh, um, will enable the plant to be replanted in a different place, in a different time. Um, so the diaspora two zero, or for me even diaspora three zero, um, will be created. Uh, the uh, primary diaspora happened in 1990. Later, um, one decade later, right now it's diaspora 3.0 because many, many, um, there are many examples of people who uh, were evacuated because they needed to help other people. They wanted to stay, but uh, lots of them came back to Ukraine regardless of the risks because uh, risks are much higher. This is why today our uh, panel makes a lot of sense. And I really think uh, to everybody, uh, my uh, final thoughts uh, is to ask you um, what you have in your head, what kind of uh, thoughts you'd like to share, and reflections of the day uh, that is ending. Uh, we have a lot of mics, so we can share. Thanks. Uh, can you hear me? I heard a thesis many times um, about the lack of human resources um, because there are no people to join uh, the teams. Have you been thinking about how this could be used for the development of the cooperation of people who uh, went abroad? Uh, yeah, how to fill the gap? of human resources. For us, there was no difference where people are, really. We were not looking at the geography, but we have been working uh, online even before COVID. So really what it didn't matter for us where people were situated. From my perspective, uh, I'm looking at the the big picture of uh, the labor market in Ukraine and outside of Ukraine. Uh, moreover, for some of the tasks, people for people um, outside Ukraine, uh, it's actually um, ironically. Uh, easier for them. Uh, it's easier for them to, to work when um, they are abroad. And this is why we take into consideration everybody, and this is a very interesting uh, thought that you reminded me that when I speak with my colleagues uh, from abroad, 
uh, from uh, international uh, centers, they are really uh, surprised that Ukrainians who uh, have come abroad, most of them believe that it's just temporary, that they will come back, that they are not going to uh, stay there and take roots. Uh, they do not have want to have temporary work there uh, because everybody believes in uh, victory that it will happen quite quick do, uh, very quick and they want to come back return as fast as they can and take part in the Ukrainian um, artistic life uh, I think it's important to talk about uh, this that uh, most Ukrainian activists, uh, cultural activists, continue their uh, their work um, abroad. Alexandra, this question for us never really appeared because we have been cooperating all the time with people who were situated in all corners of the world, uh, with Olena, uh, who's in Great Britain. Uh, a designer uh, who's in, in, in Germany and so on. But we understand that it is not enough. Uh, w what we're lacking is, is, is a different uh, thing. That people who uh, already produced something that we've, uh, we've been exhibiting in our museum and then they live their life. Uh, but the problem is for people to come to Ukraine and work in Ukraine in the Ukrainian context. Uh, we wanted to, to work until peace was reinstated. Um, for example, during residency in the museum that would allow people to um, come into the context of, uh, of the Ukrainian context so that they can continue uh, disseminating their, uh, their ideas uh, but also come back to our institutions uh, in a way that would be a, a thematical ping pong and Ukraine would be Uh, because Ukraine currently is kind of out of sight of the Ukrainian uh, of the European um, center of attention so this is why we need to attract people's attention to to Ukraine and the question is is how to do it in in the current um, circumstances dear colleagues we have more questions it can sound provocatively but uh, i don't have such an intention to put someone in an uncomfortable position, but I'm just curious. Part of people who are leaving Ukraine, they do not come back. And so the question uh, about the artworks that left the country, as far as I understand, it all happened quite spontaneously. And it was not done according to some procedures of uh, temporary procedures. So how important this uh, question for you. Have you elaborated these procedures? Um, do you have some forecasts? How many works are going to be returned to Ukraine and how many works won't? Who is ready to answer? <coughs> yes, I see that Ksenia wants to say something. First of all, I would like to uh, uh, Greet uh, Valeria Schiller, who is uh, in your audience at the moment, and I'm very glad that again we are cooperating, we are working together. So congratulations on your coming back to institution, although she's uh, living in Berlin, uh, but I'm very glad that we became more flexible. And what I would like to say that I'm very grateful to those artists who are living in Europe now, because it is because it is very difficult. Every time, every day you have to communicate and every day you have to be an advocate, a voice. Uh, 
I am sure that we are going to create new institutions, new projects, new job positions. Uh, but basically, I think that everyone should live up to their own principles. And I'm very glad that there are so many opportunities now for well-educated people. And so we will be ready. Uh, we, uh, I mean, those people uh, who are in Ukraine and who are working in Ukraine institutions in Ukraine, we are becoming more flexible. Previously, we uh, did not work with someone who was not here in Kiev and did not uh, go to job, but we became more flexible. And I uh, think that all of us should be flexible. Mm, and we have common intellectual field, and COVID taught us the new instruments to use, so it's not new to us. We know it all. So. This is so a drop of optimism for you. Uh, this is the last question, but it doesn't mean that we have to interrupt our discussions. Unfortunately, our speakers from Lviv and Kiev won't hear, won't listen to this, but still we can discuss afterwards. Uh, and uh, But asking your question about the f uh, fate of works that uh, were brought abroad. I can give you an example. It's an example of uh, obtaining semi-independence uh, at the beginning of the 20th century when uh, Armenia became uh, independent. Armenians around the whole world uh, told that they opened the Museum of Ivazovsky, but there are almost no pic uh, pictures of Ivazovsky in this museum. And all people from abroad, Armenians from abroad, realized that this is their task to find the uh, works of these masterpieces of uh, this painter. And nowadays, this is the biggest museum, and the museum with the biggest collection of Ivazovsky pictures, paintings. And why I'm telling this? Because it seems to me that both for Ukrainians and for foreigners, it will be sort of prestige to bring back the works that we do not know about uh, who were that were evacuated some time ago to some other European countries. And it seems to me that there will be a trend of returning these masterpieces and using this heritage uh, together with the museums and using the digital um, possibilities of sharing. I think this will, and this will be uh, a key uh, to this problem. I would like to thank to all the participants and I would like to remind you that culture helps us become people who know each other. We understand each other much better and we are creating a circle of solidarity. So keep on helping, keep on supporting each other and taking care of each other. Sharing is caring and therefore uh, we did exactly this. We cared about each other today. And of course, we also stressed that we have to take care of ourselves. So take care of yourselves. Have a nice evening and have a nice evening. Uh, we had a very fruitful day. It was a first iteration uh, of Artslink. We have two more days ahead of us. Thanks a lot.